this Shabbos is a special Shabbos. It's the Shabbos that um. begins the month of El. It's Rosh Chodesh El, this Shabbos. Shabbos and Sunday. All right, so we have to think about it a little bit. What What is our Avayda? What should we be focusing on? What should we be thinking about during the month of El? You know, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, obviously El is the month that precedes, that leads us into Rosh Hashanah. So when you think about, like, what to work on, there's, like, everything. Like, we're, you know... <laughs> Like the Pusik says, from my heels to my head, there's nothing that's perfect. So I should just work on everything. But what, what specifically should we, should we try to focus on, in particular this month of El, to give us a little bit of access to the, you know, to Rachme Shemayim, to mercy from the Rabbanu Shalom that we could access this month. So the truth is, we find in the, in the writings of the Rizal that he talks about the month of El, and he explains that you know, every single day, many people do this every single day, some people not, but they must have started as the Chashkenaz. We say the Yud Gomi this Rachman, right? Hashem Hashem kill Rachman Vachana. Describe Hashem as being merciful, compassionate, and so on. The Yud Gomi this Rachman, 13 attributes of mercy. So every single day, again, for example, if you dub in the and you say that by Tachman, so you're trying to awaken, to evoke <coughs> the, those Midas, the, 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 you know, the Mid of compassion of, of Rachman. The Rizal said, <coughs> the truth is, the month of El is, is a, a particular month which the entire month is shining with that quality, with that energy of the 13 attributes of mercy. Yudgum is Rachman is shining throughout the entire month of El. And there is also said, therefore, if a person wants to connect oneself to the time right now of the month of El properly and to really access all of its power, one has to somehow connect to that quality that's called Rachman. That's called Rachman, compassion. So, uh, so I, I want to just try to speak for just a couple minutes about what that mid is, the mid of racham, the mid of compassion, of mercy, and uh, and how to sort of use that in terms of avodas Hashem, service of the Rebbeinu Shlaim, and 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 you know, so how to awaken a compassion from the Rebbeinu Shlaim. So it's like this: we know that when you have, let's say, one person helping another person, right? Ruvain is, for example, helping Shem. So there are two different words in Hebrew to describe. <coughs> What's going on in Ruvain's heart? You know, what is he thinking? What is he feeling when he's helping out his friend Shimon? So one term is chesed. Now, is that Ruvain is, let's say, a bal chesed. He's a person of kindness. He's a kind person. He's a bal chesed. And therefore, he wants to help Shimon. And he feels chesed in his heart. Okay, that's one midah. And another midah that we try to, some, that we sometimes describe Ruvain as having is Rachman. That he has mercy, has compassion on Shem. That's why he's being motivated to help the other person. What's the difference between Chesed versus Rachman? So it's like this: the person that you know in our history, the one, the one Sadik that is the embodiment of Chesed, that's the poster child for Chesed, is who is Avram Avinu, right? So Avram Avinu's Chesed was expressed in one particular story, right? That he's after three days of the Bris Mila, right? After the third day, he's standing outside his tent. It's the heat of the sun, and he's looking for someone to bring into his house to get to do kindness towards. That's chesed. Now this chesed is, I want to give. I just need someone to find to receive. You know what I mean? I'm a just, I'm just a loving, kind-hearted person. And I want to have guests. Who the guest is, it could be you, it could be someone else. I just need someone to give a guest to. That's, that's a very, very beautiful midah. That's chesed. What's rachamim? Rachamim is, you're walking down the street. The last thing you're thinking about is giving tzedakah necessarily, but you happen to pass by, like, let's say, you know, a homeless person on the street, or like a, a small child or something, God forbid, that's, that's homeless, and it's just, you feel terribly compassionate for this person. You feel, it just, it, it pulls at your heartstrings, and because of that, you're motivated to give the person a doubt. That's called rachamim. You know, this rachamim is a feeling of mercy, of compassion that you have for another human being. It wasn't motivated from you. It was motivated from seeing that person. And from experiencing and thinking about what, what's, what's it like in that person's shoes, that motivates you to then want to help and to try to give. Now, it's interesting, when you compare these two qualities, so obviously chesed has its unbelievable mila. Chesed shows, chesed says a lot about you because you're the type of person like Avram Vino that's just standing at the door waiting for something to give that, that says a lot about how kind you are, certainly. But in terms of, of how deeply emotionally invested you are in the act of giving, like how, how, how deeply are you stirred? So then Rachman is much deeper. 
Rachamim is much deeper. See, Avram Avinu is standing outside waiting for someone to give, and when he finds an Arab or whatever, so he gives. And he's we, don't, we know he doesn't have anybody to give it to. So he's frustrated by that. He's frustrated by that. But when eventually he finds someone, it sounds good. But when you have Rachamim, Rachamim is something much deeper. Rachamim is that when the mercy, when the, when the Rachmonis, when a person feels compassion and like, like a person sees like a, you know, a three-legged puppy or whatever, it is, you know, a, a, a sad situation, that awakes within a person a much deeper response. It's not always. So now, the, 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 let's put it this way. Chesed is the person always wants to give. So it's, it's much more consistent. But in terms of its depth, mercy is much deeper. Mercy is much deeper. So it's like this. We want the Rabbani Shalom. We want the Rabbani Shalom to look at us. The Rabbani Shalom is always about chesed. The Rabbani Shalom always is in the act of giving. You know what I'm saying? He's always giving us health, and he's giving us life, and he's giving us the ability to see and to hear and to eat. He's giving us everything. What we want the Rabbani Shalom to do during this time is not just to give with chesed. We want the Rabbani Shalom to look at us and say, uh, so, so, it's so sad. Their situation is so it's so sad. I feel so bad for them, and I want to give out of rachmim. When the rabbanu is a, it, when when the midas harachmim is awakened by the rabbanu shalom, then the giving that he does is much deeper. It's much much deeper. So how do we have, how do we awaken rachmim? And what's amazing about rachmim is the, the, the this point is that. The sadder the situation, the, sad, the more pity, pityful the person is, the deeper the, the, the giver wants to give. See, if it's just chesed, it's not like that. Avram Avinu always wants to give, but if this guy is, uh, he might not, you know, the, the, it, might, it doesn't necessarily, the, 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 the amount of giving Avram Avinu wants to give doesn't necessarily measure how much that person needs. Avram Avinu just wants to give. He wants to give the same amount to everybody. Rachmim, Rachmim is always, is always, uh, is always connected with how much you need. The more a person needs, the sadder the situation, the sorrier, the more pitiful the situation, the more it awakens Rachmim in the giver, and the deeper he wants to give. And so this is the amazing quality of Hashem's Midas Rachim, which is that as low as a person sinks, as, many, as more mm-hmm. mistakes that a person makes, if they're able to awaken Rachim in, then the, wor- the worse shape they're in, the more they're going to get. That's what's amazing. The worse shape a person's in, if they're able to awaken Rachman from the Rabbanu Shlalem, then the worse situation you're in, the more you're going to get. Chesed is not like that. Again, Chesed is just even keel. The Rabbanu is going to give the same whether, whether you need more or you need less. Rachman is, again, the worse s- situation you are. If you could awaken Rachman mercy from the Rabbanu Shlalem, then the, better, the more you're going to get. So here's the question, so, and that's what the month of El is. The month of El is a month where, we're, where, where there's a tremendous potential of awakening Rachmanis from the Rabbani Shlomo. And again, the meat of Rachmanis is that the worse situation you're in, physically or spiritually, the more you're going to get. And so how do we awaken Rachman? All right, so there's a principle in Torah, which is that Hashem always asks me to connect with me. Me to connect with me. Which is that if we want the Rabbani Shlomo to act in a certain way, then that's how we have to act within ourselves. So, if we want to awaken these 13 princ- uh, mi- attributes of mercy, Mizrachimim, and we want the Rabbani Shalom to look at us and say, I feel so bad for them, I need to give them everything in the universe. Whether it be, r- you know, forgiveness, uh, parnasa, uh, spiritual enlightenment, you name it. I ju- the, the, because they're so deficient, that's, to that extent I want to give them. Then we have to have Rachmanis in our own lives. So what does that mean? So, listen, in terms of Inadun Lechavero, man and man, so it's obvious. The more Rachmanis, the more compassion we can have in other Jews. The more compassion we can have in other people. The more compassion we can have on, on the entire world. The more we're going to awaken from heaven that quality that's called Rachman. And what that means, by the way, is the following idea. You know, Rabbi Nachman writes this in the Maran. He says that, like, what's the saddest situation possible? Like what's the what? Let's imagine for a second. Like what's a scenario that would awaken, that would evoke, that should evoke the greatest rachmanis, the greatest sense of, oh my gosh, whatever I can do to help. What's the saddest situation? So you can imagine a person who's poor, a person who's going through all sorts of difficulty, shalom bayis, who knows what. Rav Nachman says that's all sad. It could be, but you know what the saddest situation is? The biggest rachmanis. The biggest Rachmanis, he says, is a Jew who's being weighed down 
by his by his averes. That's the saddest situation. A Jew who's not living up to what they can become. A Jew who's not li- who's not who who's, who doesn't recognize the unbelievable treasure that they have inside called the Jewish soul. That's the greatest rachmanus of all. That's much sadder than any situation, because you can have a person who literally contains within them an infinite amount of power and of energy. And for whatever reason, they're just simply unaware of what they already have. That's the saddest situation in the world. And says, and Rabbi Nachman therefore said that if a person looks at another Jew and sees their situation in life and feels Rachmanis for them, again, whether it be because of their situation in Gashmias or even the more so, their situation in Ruchnias, then that's me the Kineg and Midah. If the more Rachmanis we have, and the more, the, and 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 the, then when we look at a, we look at another person or or a, or a person, uh, a Jew in particular, who their spiritual situation has so deteriorated, to the point of where they themselves don't know what it, what it means to be a Jew. They themselves don't know what it means to be created by the Infinite One, to be connected to the Infinite One. And to that extent, so there's always two reactions, right? They could be like, oh, that guy, he's a million miles away, forget him. Or no, no, no. It, that the, his situation evokes even more mercy, and I want to do even more, th- I po- the, even more so to help that person to to show him what he already has within himself. And so that when a person goes with that quality that's called rachamim, you awaken from the rebbeinu shalami the rachamim. Not only is this true when it comes to another Jew, this has to be all the more so when a person looks at themselves. The Baal Tanya in, in Lukut in, in, in Sefer Tanya in, in a few in a few places, the Baal Tanya explains that. There is such a thing as having Rachmanis on yourself. What do you think to have Rachmanis on yourself? So he says like this, he says a person, let's say, takes stock of one's life. L is a time where a person has to start thinking about, you know, their spiritual situation. And he says like this, And you say to yourself, The truth is, <laughs> the truth is the truth. And I'm very far from the person that I know I'm supposed to be. It's not true. Ach calls that, but says, but said the Balatanya, but what does it mean to have Rachmanis on yourself? See, if you just think about how far you are, you're not going to be Rachmanis, that's just okay, so I'm, figuring, I'm, I'm lost. Says the Balatanya, the reaction then has to be a sense of Rachmanis, how so? Kol zehu ani lovadi hu aguf. Said the Balatanya, because you have to realize, instead of thinking, thinking of yourself as someone who's, who's messed up, instead of thinking of yourself as someone who's very far from who they should be, you have to think of yourself as a person who's trapped in a prison and you're being held captive by an enemy. Who's that enemy? The Eight Sahara. Who's that enemy? Called Gullus, exile. That's the enemy. And instead of, th- instead of identifying yourself with the enemy and saying, well, I'm a bad guy, the, 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 that's, not, that's not going to awaken Rachmanis. Well, no one has Rachmanis on a bad guy. You have Rachmanis on a good guy who's being held captive by a bad guy. So said the Balatani, that's how a Jew has to look at oneself. You have to look at yourself like that, and you look at other Jews like that. Where instead of defining them based on their mistakes, you have to, the person has to be mechazek oneself, especially this month of El, to look at the mistakes as, as, as a prison that they fell into. And the, and the deeper the prison, the sadder the situation. Because, the, the, because what a Jew is naturally and instinctually is not an entity that belongs in that prison. A Jew, by their own essential nature, is connected to God, and not, and wants nothing more than to than to return to God. And if a Jew finds oneself far from that holy environment, it's just the saddest thing in the world because they're just being they're being held uh, held captive. Uh, they've been brainwashed by their own Yitzhahara to convince themselves and to think that this, that this is who they are. That's the saddest <coughs> thing in the world. The biggest Rahman is, is if you have a prince who doesn't even know that they're a prince. And lives a life of a peasant, lives a life of, life of, a, of a very low person, completely unaware of the fact that they're a prince. That's a sad situation. That's very, very sad. And instead of just wa- wallowing in that self pity, the idea is to be motivated to do something about it. The, when you hear, when, when you hear a, a situation like that, the, the, the concept is not to just wallow in it and to say, okay, what was me? I'm just trapped in that prison. We put ourselves in that prison, we can get ourselves out. But the thought process of envisioning ourselves and realizing ourselves as people who are trapped in a place that's unbecoming of us, that has to awaken mercy on ourselves, 
and mercy on other Jews. And the more Rachmanis we can feel in ourselves, the more Rachmanis from the Rabbanu Shalom will be awakened. And that's what this month is. That's what this month is about. I'll share with you something very, very quickly. And again, it might take a little bit, a few minutes, but just something very, very quickly. What on Shabbos, throughout the entire davening of Shabbos, we say, we say a lot, we say a lot of tefillahs. What's the, there's one particular line in all the tefillahs of Shabbos, which according to the result is the deepest. It awakens the highest place in heaven, on the deepest of levels. What is that? So Jesus said the deepest part of davening that awakens the Rabbani Shalom in the most sublime way is when you say Shema Yisrael, by Keser, by Musaf, by Kedusha, by Kedusha, by Musaf. When you say Shema Yisrael, right? That's the deepest part of that. It awakens Mamish. It opens up the highest gates. Sabbath. So, we're, what's the history of it? Why do we say Shema by 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 Kaddish, by Kedusha over there? So it's very simple. The history is very passionate. There was a certain time where the where the Romans made a decree that the Jewish people were not allowed to say Kriya Shema properly at the right time. So what are we supposed to do is you can't get the shul. If you got the shul to say Shema at the right time in the morning, we, we put the jail, executed, who knows? So they didn't say Shema then. So as uh, so so what what did Chazal do? What Chazal did was that they enacted that we should say Shema in the middle of Kedusha over there in Mosaf, which is after this man of Krishma, as just to remember what Krishma is. To remember what Krishma is. So you know what the Swarm say. So when the Jews of that generation, when they were saying the word Shema Yisrael in the middle of Kedusha over there, what do you think they were thinking? What were they feeling? You know what they were feeling? They were feeling, they were feeling Rachmanis. They are saying, oh my God, what has become of us? That we've fallen to such a place that we can't even say Shema at the right time. They were, when they said those words, they weren't feeling, they weren't th- feeling like so excited about themselves, oh amazing, you were saying Shema. The exact opposite, they were feeling sad about their situation. And they, they, they literally felt themselves as if they were trapped in this prison the Romans put in them, put on them, that they're unable to say Shema at the right time. And they felt a sense of deep sense of of, of Rachmanis on themselves. And said that Rizal, you see what that does. When a person feels Rachmanis, then it awakens from the Rabbanish and Rachmanis and it opens the deepest of gates. The deepest, deepest gates are open when you say those that Pasuk of Shema Yisrael by Kedusha's Kasser. Because that's what you're trying to feel at that moment. That's what you're trying to awaken. A sense of Rachmanis of like, we, we, we are better than this. And it's Rachmanis that we can't live up to it. But that's what, that's what the Yud can read. Rachman or about. That's what the month of El is. So that's the Avayda of this month. The Avayda of this month is to look at our lives and to take stock of our situations, how much learning we do, davening, mitzvahs, Shabbos, kashras, tefillin, all that stuff. And any deficiency, to whatever extent we find a deficiency, the reaction has to be not, oh, what can you do? And the reaction is, should not be, I'm a terrible guy. The reaction has to be, I'm, it's so sad that this is my situation. Why is it so sad? Because I'm better than this. I contain within myself something that's higher than this. And the more Rachmanis you could feel on yourself, the more Rachmanis the Rabbani Shalom will feel towards you. And when Hashem feels Rachmanis, then Hashem gives to the extent that you're missing. And the, the lower the person is, the more the Baal Rachman wants to give. Hashem should be should be each and every one of us to be able to feel the Rachmanis in ourselves, to feel the Rachmanis in other Jews, and to waken from the Rabbani Shalom and this Rachmim, we should be zaycha that Hashem, who is described as a kel rach and l'chanan, should be manifest in our lives with a slicha, mechila, a kapara, and a shana toivu masuka for us and for all of our family. Thank you, Hashem. Thank you, Hashem. Thank you, Hashem. Thank you, Hashem. Thank you, Hashem.